Did you know that the best kind of armor is the one that is already vaporized? Hello, I'm Todd and this is Astron X. Today, we're going to be discussing real energy shields and even propose one, maybe two, of our own concepts. Armor, regardless of whether it's protecting against weaponry or the hazards of space travel in general, it's limited by its melting and vaporization temperatures. It's a similar problem faced by the nuclear rocket scientists in the 60s and 70s. For them, the efficiency of their engines were limited because their reactor would melt if pushed too hard. The solution? Radical, yet simple. Let the reactor melt. In fact, let it vaporize and then hold it back by means of vortexes or energy fields. The same can be done for armor. You know, normally vaporized armor is kind of useless. But hold it in place, keep it dense with magnetic fields, and you get the best possible armor, a kind of basic shield. In 2014, a group of physics students at the University of Leicester, Great Britain, as part of another project, ran the numbers to see if something like a Star Wars shield was actually possible given our level of technology. What they calculated is that a magnetic field of only 5 Tesla, similar to the output of an MRI machine, could indeed hold in place plasma dense enough to not only absorb visible light laser weapons, but it could also be adjusted for a wide array of frequencies. Though there were a number of problems associated with their concept, they still proved that the idea was worthy of serious research. Even stronger fields, such as those being developed for fusion confinement, could hold in place plasma dense enough to absorb soft X-rays. And there are already experiments generating pulsed magnetic fields of 100 Tesla, and even some devices that can generate one-time pulses of up to 1200 Tesla. It's only a matter of time, and not much time at all, before we can routinely generate field strengths of several hundred or even a thousand Tesla. Even low density plasma shields are useful. While they may not deflect incoming energies directly, they can ionize neutral particle beams, allowing magnetic fields to deflect them. There are some downsides to plasma shielding. The plasma absorbs all incoming and outgoing radiation, blocking all communications and leaving the shielded craft blind. Could these problems be solved? Oh yes, given enough time. Shields can be classified into two broad categories, zonal and full enclosure, or complete shields. Zonal shields have many separate projectors, each with its own power supply, possibly linked to central power supply, and protecting only a small region of the craft. If the projector of a region is damaged or otherwise fails, that section is left defenseless. On the other hand, if fully enclosed shields, each projector can individually protect the entire craft. Destroying a projector in one section merely weakens the shield as a whole, but it does not leave anywhere completely defenseless. At this point, you might be noticing a potential overlap between the zonal and the complete shieldings, and you'd be right. A zone-by-zone -zone shield could be repositionable, like on Star Wars, where the deflector array can be angled to protect a different section, or perhaps where a zone projector could spread its shield to fill the gap left by a failed projector. Another important aspect to consider is shield durability. Only a very basic shield would actually be depleted under bombardment, as is usually depicted in science fiction. Even a plasma shield could be made to regenerate rapidly by emitting more gas to reinforce the shield, should it be blown away by weapons fire or cosmic radiation. More advanced shields, however, making use of fields alone, don't suffer from this limitation at all. I'll explain. 
The next shield I'm about to discuss is an Astron X original concept. What we've designed here is a plasma shield that can never be depleted by bombardment. The way our shield works is like this. Powerful lasers would blast the surrounding space around a vessel, tearing apart the quantum vacuum, generating matter and antimatter via pair production. A thin layer of conventional plasma may be used to improve the pair production efficiency. So the newly generated matter in the form of electrons and positrons would form a so-called ambiplasma, a plasma made of matter and antimatter rather than matter or antimatter alone. This ambiplasma would then be compressed into densities great enough to absorb high energy photons. By generating plasma as needed, such shield would not be depleted during combat or bombardment by cosmic radiation. The external energies will only generate more ambiplasma, strengthening the shield by pair production. So, what we have designed here is a self-reinforcing shield. The greater the bombarding energies, the greater the field strength. Note, and similar to Dune, where Holtzman effect shields produce an explosion when hit by laser fire, Ambioplasma shields might produce an antimatter explosion if hit with sufficient energies and or bombarded within an atmosphere. There's something very important to note here. Unlike what you might expect from science fiction, warships will not be the only craft with powerful shields. You see, traveling through space at relativistic speeds is like being bombarded with a universe-sized particle beam or ray gun with energetic EM radiation thrown in for good measure. Really, any and all starships must be as durable as the most powerful warships just to survive a single trip, let alone many. This is the primary reason shields are necessary and must be developed for nearly all spacecraft. We also have pure electromagnetic shields. These can be divided into two broad categories, near field and projected electromagnetic shielding. Near field simply means electromagnetic coils generating fields that can deflect charged particles. Projected EM shielding means electromagnetic waves, that is, maser or laser point defense screens. A purely magnetic field is unlikely. Adding plasma, even if it is only to ionize matter, practically always improves the effectiveness of the shield. Laser point defense screens are interesting, as they are already being developed and are quite effective against all but highly relativistic particle beams and other light speed beam weaponry or electromagnetic cosmic rays. A point defense screen would have no need for turrets, making use of phased array laser emitters instead, such as DARPA's current Excalibur project. These lasers could be switched nearly instantaneously, making a high nigh impenetrable screen against any matter, including particle beams, traveling slower than about 80 to 95 percent the speed of light. Something like this has already been proposed for starships to vaporize and or ionize incoming matter to deflect it. Now we come to the controversial gravitational shielding. I don't mean materials that shield gravitation. That's a topic for another video. I mean synthetic, artificially generating gravity fields. The proper name is paragravity, para meaning synthetic, used to shield or screen against hazards. Some months ago, we published a video about controlling gravity artificially. In it, we discussed the work of Dr. Musha and Panero on a means of artificially generating and controlling gravitational fields, something within our grasp. Using this controversial technology, we could propose a new kind of shield that is also highly effective. We could cover a spacecraft in paragravitic coils, completely enveloping the craft in many overlapping repulsive gravity fields. 
Unlike magnetic fields, incoming projectiles cannot fight back or produce any really noticeable kickback against the paragravitic field projectors. Because of the techniques used to generate these paragravitic fields, the bulk of the energy required is supplied by the quantum vacuum, the QV, the ubiquitous fluid of inferior particles that carries the electromagnetic force. Even so, the energy required to warp spacetime sufficiently to redirect light completely would be excessive. So combining this with a plasma shield would be wise. Perhaps our Ambia plasma shield, which is also generated from the QV. As a side note, armor made of neutronium, white dwarf star material, or any other form of ultra-dense, high-pressure matter, would have more in common with a plasma shield than conventional armor. Both must be restrained by powerful energy fields. Such a shield might be possible, but in the more distant future. For those of you who watched The Expanse, you may have noticed the pretty plasma spewing out of the railguns when fired. This was apparently thought up by a real scientist who come up with the notion of firing a laser pulse through a cloud of gas, producing a long plasma channel that acts like an extended rail, vastly improving the projectile's speed. The tech required to manipulate plasma in this manner, reshaping the laser pulse, etc., could also be used to create a plasma shield around the ships of the expanse. Yeah, perhaps this is a railgun countermeasure, just a thought. And there you have it, a compact yet detailed discussion of both cutting edge and bleeding edge possibilities for real life shields. What do you think? What sort of shields would you use? Zonal shields? Complete covering shields? Would you use plasma or perhaps lasers? Or maybe just simply electromagnetic fields? Or perhaps the gravitic shielding intrigues you? Or would you use some combination thereof? Give us your thoughts and inputs in the comment section or head over to Twitter and let us know there or both. Don't forget to subscribe clicking on the bell and if you can, support us on Patreon. Also, remember to check the community tab on our YouTube channel page in order to stay up to date on the latest activities, upcoming videos amongst other general announcements and conversations. If you want to contact us, do so via our YouTube About page or our website. We would like to give a big shout out to all of our patrons, especially Walter Matera, for becoming a super light interstellar patron. Thank you. I also want to thank everyone for watching. Until next time, keep wondering about space. This is Astron X.